No, you're fine. You're fine. Oh, that for a uh, segue. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here's where the fun starts. Of course, this is a luncheon, so everybody's consuming some excellent food here provided by the facility today. How about a round of applause here? job at uh, providing some really excellent uh, you know, selections here. So diet, I like the, using this picture for almost all of my presentations because it doesn't look too good. You are what you eat, so don't be fast, cheap, easy, and fake. I initially used this picture for a group of college students that I was uh, doing presentations for because, you know, it looked pretty typical. But you guys have like the exact opposite right here. So to try to learn about things to help our longevity, we have to really explore the research. At this time, the United States is ranked 80th in preventable death. So we're not doing so good. Um, in a recent study, 2.7% of all adults in the US had all four of these lifestyle factors. First one being moderately active. The second one, having a healthy diet. Third one, not smoking. And the fourth one is having the recommended percentage of body fat. Believe it or not, and I couldn't believe this, four out of 10 Americans ate vegetables less than once a week. Yeah, I, that's just completely, but you know, we hear it. So instead of looking at this research that exists in the US, I started to dig a little bit deeper. There's a lot of information available about this area called, these areas called blue zones. These are areas in the world with the longest, healthiest living populations. So I want to learn what they're up to because they have some really great stuff. We have Loma Linda, California. We have Costa Rica, Italy, Greece, and Japan. How many of y'all kind of heard a little bit about Mediterranean diet? Yeah, that's so you can see two of those places are in the Mediterranean region. So learning from what they eat is going to be really helpful. Top of the trends that they all had in common, which were to stop eating when you're 80% full. 80%. I wish we had like some kind of uh, measure. Right, right. I guess we have, it's, you know, taking our time, eating mindfully, you know, kind of relaxing, eating the smallest meal of the day in the afternoon and or in the late evening. So sometimes uh, we might say to have breakfast like a king, eat lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper. Because if we're going to have a large meal, we want to use that energy for all the things that we have to do that day. And later at night, we don't want to eat something too much that we just go right to sleep on. We also were talking earlier about how it can be very helpful to not eat between two to three hours before going to bed. Um, two to three. If you have reflux, definitely three. Just <laughs> um, we like to uh, eat eating mostly plants, especially beans, and eating meat rarely in small portions of three to four ounces. The blue zone populations ate portions this size five times a month on average. Compared to the standard American diet, we're really getting large, large portions of those proteins. And where are the vegetables? So what can you do? Fiber diet, high fiber diet. You guys heard about that before, and that's definitely the takeaway. If you were to take anything away from this, for increase the fiber in your diet. They even showed that you could get, if you could get between eight to 15 grams of fiber per meal, your body's gonna have optimal nutrients. So of course it helps with your digestive health when we have a lot of problems with colon cancer and different digestive concerns. You want to keep your engine well moving. A lot of folks, if you have a bowel movement less than once per week, then we have to find a way to regulate that diet. Um, Okinawans eat seven, one of the populations that were studied. 70% of their diet is sweet potatoes. And so often are we told, oh, not to eat this, that, and the other thing. 70% sweet potatoes, I think that'd be delicious. <laughs> Twist my arm, oh no. Um, other cultures, especially the Mediterranean, had a half a cup to one cup of beans a day, and, and a total up to 50 grams of fiber. So if you think you already get enough fiber, something to zone in on. 
the standard American diet recommends about 25 grams per day for women and 35 grams per day for men. In every nutrition session I'll have with a patient, if we talk about different diets you've done in the past, it's oftentimes we're counting what? Calories. calories, yeah, calories, points, but this is the real point, it is counting those fiber grams. A lot of my patients would only, oftentimes get about 7 to 12 grams of fiber per day. And if the recommendation is 35, we're really missing the mark here. Um, yeah. What about fiber powder? That's a great question. A fiber powder can be in, um, in, a, in a psyllium husk formulation. could be a great addition to a healthy, balanced diet to really boost those levels up. You want to try to get as much as you can from the foods that you eat. So, yeah, it's like a little bit of uh, fiber insurance to use that supplement. Um, of course, the standard American diet only contains 12% uh, plant products, and that actually includes apples that are in apple pie and processed foods. And 63% of the standard American diet is processed foods. This excessive sodium risk increases risk for heart disease and inflammation and all kinds of crummy stuff that you heard sodium can do. So nine servings of fruits and vegetables per day is the recommendation for overall longevity. Five to nine servings per day has been shown to decrease mortality rate, um, and it's also delicious. So if you had a supplement that's advertised, this will help you live longer, you'd probably buy it. But it didn't come from your food, from the plates you all had today. You already, I saw some of you. Some of you had two, some of you had three servings of fruits and vegetables per day. That's really loading you up with not only the fiber that we're trying to reach, but also the phytochemicals and antioxidants. Have you heard of antioxidants before? Yeah, a lot of marketing folks like to use that you know, to make some money. But blueberries, right, the foods that we eat already have these antioxidants. If you're wondering what a serving is, it's about a half a cup of cut fruit, one whole fruit, um, or one cup of cut vegetables, or one half cup cooked. So visually, I thought that this was a nice way to show you five servings, you know, could be a day where you have a banana, a nice salad, bell peppers, and applesauce five, they'll definitely can go up to nine. So, uh, What else you can do is emphasizing your non-starchy vegetables, which is your uh, greens, whole grains, and beans. Um, if you're nervous about beans, don't be, don't be, it is really common, um, but if, like exercise, if it's been a long time since you've eaten something, your digestive system has to start to warm up to get used to it. So, you know, the initial phase, there might be some soreness, but after a while, it will continue to work its magic. So beans are the magical fruit. Um, stick to whole foods for your fats. So I'm definitely aware a lot of dietary recommendations talk a lot about olive oil and coconut oil. Yes, the more you can get those oils in your diet from eating avocado and from eating coconut, and from eating almonds, you get more of that health benefit. Because not only are you getting the fat, but you're also getting the fiber. So it comes back to that again, too. When you're trying to go sh grocery shopping, I do get a lot of questions about the whole grain products and you know a lot of that information that's out there. The more you can go to a minimally processed diet, the more health benefits you'll get from that food. So we do know that whole grain bread is more uh, nutritious option than white bread. But how many of you all ever ate wheat berries before? I haven't. <laughs> you heard of it, yeah. And there's start, places are starting to make these foods a lot more available these days. I look around, ShopRite, Aldi's, they're starting to sell brown rice, quinoa, kamut. These are different whole grains that in their purest form you know, whole grain bread's pretty good, but this knocks it down. That's extremely nutritious. Um, so I have this picture. If anybody wants a copy of this, just you know, let us know before uh, we go today, and I'll be happy to share this infographic with you. And now the last thing I want to talk about nutrition-wise is probiotics. Your digestive system 
has a connection with the way everything works in your body. They've been shown to improve digestion, absorption of key nutrients, and if you have a good gut, it could prevent pathogenic colonization. That's us. That's a phrase for, for the day, <laughs> pathogenic colonization. It's, a, it's something that might lead to some digestive distress and some uh, other gut trouble. So we want to make sure that we've got a well-running machine. Um, so it is re our digestive system is remarkably stable yet vulnerable. Your gut microbiome contributes to five pounds of your body weight. So we want to treat it nice. You don't want to put a lot of chemicals in there, a lot of processed meats including uh, hot dogs, lunch meats, things that might be smoked, and, and cigarette smoke, those are things that can actually cause some digestive discomfort. You want to recognize these things and let your digestive system grow. The reason I sometimes recommend a probiotic supplement to my patients is because in our diet, we used to get probiotics from the dirt. Yeah. But we're not really eating dirt. I wouldn't buy those. They didn't clean them right. So I would probably want to take a supplement. As far as yogurt goes, it does have one of those five billion bacteria. But if we want more of the deed to get done, supplements can be very helpful. And I have resources for you on where to look that up after today. So we talked a lot about our foods to increase, and that's always the first step I like to go with patients. You want to eat more fruits and vegetables, that's really the end, the, the, the big takeaway there. But if we were to avoid certain foods to promote longevity, those foods to avoid would be refined carbohydrates and sugars, things like candy, things like soft drinks. We know those foods don't, they don't have anything for us to take into our healthy diet. Processed meats, they're using a lot of crazy things and foods these days. And the last time I looked on the back of a Scrapple label, I almost fell down. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're eating foods that you recognize. Minimize your exposure to dietary toxins like heavy metals. So those would be foods uh, that might be um, like swordfish, mackerel. The smaller fish you eat, the less mercury that you take in. And um, oxidized fats. So oxidized fats are present in processed foods, things that are fried. So that's not the news there. McDonald's definitely, I think at this point, their, their finances are going pretty low. So I went to a conference this weekend in Albuquerque. So all this information that I have here for you all today is like right here, it's fresh. So I'm really excited to share this with you. I met this doctor who had a pretty big takeaway. He said, how many ribs, burgers, or cake are worth the loss of your legs or your eyesight? <laughs> knowledge is power. You guys have that knowledge. You guys have the power. Knowledge is power, but knowledge shared is power multiplied. Share this. The more you get in your community and your family and your people who are your, your, your support system to be on the same page as you, you are not going to miss out on any of those things that food typically does, which is bring us together. All right, so healthy diets high in fiber, a good healthy microbiome, good diet for longevity. That's it. Any questions for the diet stuff? Great question. As far as different types of probiotics, I have this website, labdoor.com. I can write this down for you before you go today. I always use that program because they test to make sure that what it says on the label is in the bottle. So a lot of ones um, that are available over the counter that are really expensive might be duds, whereas the cheapy ones are actually the good stuff. So I always try to find what is good and what's available. So instead of giving you any brands today, I'm giving you the access to the information. Yes. Yes. Fish. Tuna fish. Yes, that's a great question. There are different types of fish. Um, when you're looking at tunas, they actually come in a variety of sizes. 
There is the big bluefin tuna, which is most of our sushi tuna. And then there's, uh, I think it's skipjack or albacore. Those are littler tuna fishes. So they're going to have less of that mer mercury build up. Um, so skipjack is the littlest tuna, bluefin is the biggest tuna. So if you're looking at that wall of tuna fish <laughs> at the grocery store, because they seem to have a lot of different kinds, you see skipjack, that's the one. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's a great question. Um, if you like the bones, no, okay, so it, it really, it, the only thing that it would be providing would be another way to provide dietary calcium. If you're getting calcium from other places in your diet, don't gotta get the bones. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It is full of what? Sugar. Sugar, yeah. That is why it is not my favorite thing to recommend as a source of probiotics, because if you're getting good bacteria with sugar, what do bacteria like to do? They'll just eat the sugar, and then you don't have any probiotics that get to go in your gut. So it's a kind of a null and void process there. 